Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I'm delivering an Ayazawa story. It has been a while since we did a Boku no Hero story that doesn't involve Bakugo, so I think it is time that we switch it up a little. I do still hope that you watch it, and uh, considering it's not Bakugo, I would greatly appreciate it if you maybe watch it twice, to maybe boost it a little, if you love Ayazawa that is, but who am I to judge? But regardless of that, even if you're not doing that, it would still be great if you watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and leave a comment down below. If you don't know what to comment, hey, just tell me how your day was, or what you think of the video. But why should you do that? Well, this is the easiest way how you can uh, put me in a better standing with the YouTube algorithm, so that the comments that tell me I'm really underrated, you know, don't have to be commented anymore because I finally have reached a point where people can be like, hey, this guy got what he deserves. Please get me there. You're the only people that can do that. Thanks in advance. And I hope you enjoy the show. Heroics never really were your thing. It seemed phony to you. All fake smiles and hidden truths no one wanted to talk about. It was just too much attention. On the other hand, you were way too lazy for a normal 9 to 5, and your quirk was just way too juicy to waste it in an office cubicle. Luckily, you had this realization a long time ago, and through semi-hard work and a bold load of luck, you managed to get into UA High, the biggest and most famous hero school in Japan. Of course, you didn't go there to become one of the good guys. That just wasn't your style. So you simply pretended. You trained decently hard. You learned everything you could. You even had a boyfriend who was really out to become a stalker in the night. God, it was cute. He was cute. The other girls just didn't get him. You even had your provisional hero license and a dumb hero name. Most of your final year ever, you had some planning out your future as one of the bad guys. You found it strange that not other would-be villains attended hero schools. You learned so much about how heroes acted in both your internships and job training. So when you were finally let loose and to the adult world, things were surprisingly easy. You had kept a low profile during your school years, mostly due to your avoidance of people and your future. So no one recognized you, especially after you switched out costumes. Something darker and more lethal was more your style. And secretly, you built up a few connections. Mostly smuggling, having struck a deal with a guy from America, bringing drugs from, well, somewhere. All you needed to do was patrol around the docks every two weeks, ignore his activity, and report that nothing was going on. It was an easy deal, and a good one. It basically doubled your earnings. With filled pockets, you were casually strolling through the docks at midnight. A shipment had been sent out to somewhere, and the guy had paid you almost double. Probably was something more than drugs this time, but who cares? You were making bank! That was, however, until you noticed a shadow sneakily following you. Swallowing your pride, you sighed. You had planned on going home and online shop for some new boots, but now you needed to lose this guy's trail first. Of course you knew who it was. His style of approach was too telling once he was noticed. And you wondered for how long he had been chasing you around. <laughs> Might as well give him the runaround. From the docks you entered the subway and took a train to the other end of the city. You stood next to the door to the other cart, glancing from time to time to the weird homeless guy reading a newspaper just a little too suspiciously. It 
it almost was comical. Once you left the train, you went into a tiny park next to the subway station. It had a few trees and even a pond. It was quite popular with teens trying drugs for the first time. But then again, it was serene. With a pleased grin, you sat down on the bench and pulled out your phone. You could... No, you should. Licking your lips, you dialed the number of your old high school flame. Hello? You sounded... weary. Hey, Shota. It's me. You giggled. Yeah, hi. Why are you calling me? You bit your tongue for a moment before saying, mm, Why are you following me? Silence. Ah, oh, so you're not denying it. He sighed. Ah, what were you doing at the docks? You rolled your eyes. Do you really want to discuss this on the phone, or do you want to come out of those bushes behind me? He didn't answer. Only the soft rustling of leaves indicated his approach. Quietly, he sat down next to you. Shota Aizawa, you're technically still boyfriend. Haven't seen you in a while. You chuckled. I thought you'd forgotten about me. Didn't say we would stay together after school. He looked at you. I was trying to, but you never picked up your phone, so I guessed you were doing nightly patrols or worse sleep or busy, I don't know. He shrugged. Called your boss, he told me that you often took night patrol around the docks. Since our quirk is mostly aquatic, he didn't get suspicious. You raised an eyebrow. This was the most innocent detective work you'd ever seen. I just wanted to talk to you, and then I see you take money from that shady guy before strolling off. I got suspicious and began taking dock patrols myself at my agency. You grit your teeth. Of course you knew there were patrolling heroes everywhere. What you didn't expect was that someone would go on your turf. Usually patrol routes of different hero agencies would only cross in areas with a lot of people. It was rare more than three heroes patrolled the docks to begin with. You had made a slip up. A mistake. Shit. You didn't expect someone to be already suspicious of you. Just, why did it have to be your quasi-boyfriend? What were you doing there? Trying to hide your nervousness, your mind began to race. He had about five seconds to reply or else he would not buy it. With an amused sigh, you said the first thing that came to your mind. <laughs> that shady guy was an American businessman. I have used my connections with the people working here to give his shipments a better deal. It's, well, uh, nothing illegal, but let's just say it's in a gray area. You paused. Your heart was killing you. It is shady, but hey, just trying to survive. Aizawa looked away, thinking. So he bribes you to do what? He asked after a while and decide. The deal was basically this. I get some money on the side, and then his shipments just happen to have a slightly higher priority. It's a difference of only a day. 24 hours. Whereas wares would collect dust in the shipyard. You had no idea what you were talking about. You wanted to slap yourself. You should have known better. At least do some research as to how ship deliveries worked. So that you could come up with a story on the... At least do some research on how ship deliveries at the docks worked. At least then you could come up with quick stories. But then... Aizawa leaned back, his hands behind his head. He sighed in relief. Well, to be honest, if any other person would have told me the story, I would not believe it. Your eyes widened without you really wanting to. But... 
place. Yeah, it's in a grey area. So just try not to look too suspicious, okay? I agree it's shady, but yeah, it's not illegal. He smiled. He really wanted to reprimand you more, but his feelings for you were in the way. He found you foolish, but he believed your lie, just enough to not raise a stink. He loved you. He really did. And finally you allowed yourself to calm down a little. We haven't talked for weeks, haven't we? You said with a sad tone in your voice, and he nodded. What's happening with you? You asked him with a grin. Oh, old habits die hard. I've accepted a job at UA. You blinked. Shota, you just left it. He chuckled. <laughs> during the day I will teach there, during the night I will do hero work. It's exactly what I wanted. You gave a hearty laugh. <laughs> yeah, the stalker in the night, the disciplined yet somehow still loving teacher during the day. He nervously combed through his hair. And with a smile, you added, Seems like we are both living our dreams, huh? He looked at you. Not yet, he said. I've been wondering about you for weeks. I missed you, and he fidgeted. He fidgeted. I was wondering if you would like to go on another date with me. We haven't really talked since we left school. That was sweet of him. You really shouldn't, but in reality you still loved him too. Eventually you would get behind your lie. You should tell him no. That you moved on. I would love to, you said. Damn it! With a happy smile you leaned into him. His long, slender arms snaked around you, holding you tight. I missed you. You mumbled, and you quickly raised your head to kiss him on the mouth. Maybe if you tried just a little harder, he will not get behind this. Or maybe if you played your cards just right, he would actually be okay with it. For now, however, you just wanted to enjoy the night with him. 